I'm out here with Arthur Nevin from Lost Agency on year five of sea trout uh, surveying program that he's involved on here and I'm just looking in the bucket and I see you've got some specimens, well perhaps not specimens, some beautiful sea trout already. Arch, can you tell me a bit more about, about the survey program that you're carrying out here and the sea trout in particular? Definitely, uh, as you mentioned, it's the fifth year that we've been uh, conducting a pre-spawning uh, sea trout survey. So we've highlighted that we've got a bit of a gap in our knowledge uh, of the populations of sea trout within the foil. There has been a, a, a notable decline in the numbers of sea trout and even a perceived decline possibly. Uh, so we thought that rather than talking about it, we'll go out and try to get some, some current information on the sea trout populations within the foil. We have a, a dearth of information, uh, so we need to fill the gaps so we can have an evidence base uh, for future management of sea trout populations in the foil. This year, how are things looking? Is this your first day out on the sea trout this year? Well, first of all, I should say it's mid-October uh, and uh, you're, you're right, it's our first day out this year. We tend to survey maybe four or five days every year around uh, the same sort of period, give or take a week or two. And this year we've, uh, we've had a very successful first day surveying. Uh, we've had upwards of 25 uh, beautiful foil sea trout uh, caught within a, a three or four hour window. Tell us a bit about how you carry out the survey. Well, it's an interesting type. Uh, whenever we started back about five years ago, we thought that maybe putting an adult trap to catch the fish would be the best way. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to get the numbers that we knew were here. So we decided that we would do uh, an electrofishing survey where we would actually pack all our gear in. So we've got backpacks that we use for electrofishing. Uh, but more importantly, we carry in our scales or uh, measuring board. So we've got a, a mobile sampling station every few hundred meters. So whenever we get a fish, we uh, take it out and we measure it on the balance and then the, the board. So we'll record lengths, weights, we'll, uh, we'll take scales and this key biological information that we collect will be able to be fed back into the management process so we'll know the average sizes that are spawning within this tributary. And in the long term, it's our desire to not just survey this tributary, we'd love to have an index uh, network of maybe six or seven uh, sea trout spawning sites within the foil area. All right, that's very, very good. I mean, the, the numbers are, are looking promising again, and you're saying you're back a bit earlier than you, than you have been historically. So it'll be interesting, but um, yeah, there's been a lot of habitat works carried out on this river. I mean, how do you think that, I mean, has that been proven beneficial within this, this particular tributary and throughout the whole foil system, the, hab the habitat restoration projects? Well, I think uh, we have to be actively managing and improving our habitats as we're doing this. There's no point spending five years just surveying. We want a combined program of monitoring survey and hand in hand with that we have to have the improvement aspect and you're right uh, Lux agency have spent significant sums of money on the, the, the this tributary uh, in recent years to actively improve the habitat that's uh, everything from bush and tree trimming this river has become rather tunneled uh, over the years uh, so we've cleared that we've introduced spawning gravels and nursery stone and also protected the banks because there's quite heavily uh, heavy trampling trampling uh, by cattle which can to stabilize the bank and just find sediments which block those spawning gravels and we have to remember this is a, a spawning and a nursery tri nursery tributary so we have to make sure that all the uh, life cycle and all the uh, different stages of the trout can survive within this river from spawning fish to the juvenile par and to the returning adults as well this is great work you're carrying out here art and um, you seem to be following in on quite famous footsteps on James Douglas Ogilvy did a lot of surveying on sea trout and I know that he was sending samples from here to the London Museum many 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 years ago you know do you know can you tell us a wee bit about James? Well I think he's locally uh, forgotten in many ways but uh, there may be a few people and a few families that would still remember them uh, there's a he's a large family connection to the area and as you said he he maybe was the, the first to look at the sea trout populations uh, within this area uh, he emigrated from Ireland where he became an eminent ichthyologist in Australia uh, really top of his field and that story isn't known locally at all so yes it is it's a it's an honor to actually uh, come back and work with sea trout uh, in such illustrious footsteps and just another historical note of serious interest that I believe uh, his father William Ogilby uh, was actually a contemporary uh, and in close communication with Charles Darwin as well so it shows you uh, the, the level at which they were uh, thinking about the natural environment even back a couple of hundred years ago within this this area what other species, you've, you've got some lovely sea trout here, I know you've caught some bigger ones earlier on as part of the survey, but what other species of fish have you found in the river today? Well, from surveying over the recent years and today, you know, there's no shortage of brown trout in here as well, so it's really a productive body of water. 
uh, probably one of the most productive tributaries within the foil area uh, for, for trout in particular, although it also has populations uh, of European eel, uh, we've seen sticklebacks today and, and eel as well, but it's predominantly the, the trout that we're, we're seeing in, in really lovely numbers today and it's a fine example of where we've got large numbers of brown trout or resident trout, but we've also got a really strong population of uh, sea trout or the migratory form of trout. Yeah, but not always the case because there's there's lots of different rivers and tributaries in the foil catchment, but you won't always go along and find what you're talking about. Good populations of brown trout, salmon and sea trout. Quite a lot of them don't have sea trout, so this seems to be pretty unique. This is a special uh, tributary and uh, I wish we had a few more like this, and, and we do, but we maybe just haven't got on top of them yet. Uh, but we know um, historically this has been a really important sea trout spawning tributary. So we're trying to uh, to monitor these and prove them where we can because, as you said, they're, they're, this isn't the norm. So that's why we have to actively protect, conserve and improve these habitats because uh, we want more of them, but we really need to preserve and protect what we have. So it's pretty unique, this catchment here. So perhaps when you do have catchments like this, they should be afforded a little extra protection, uh, special status. Whenever it comes to, to a tributary like this, when you have more than salmon, brown trout, you've got the sea trout as well, and you mentioned lamprey and eels. So maybe areas like this, we should be looking at them and try and afford them additional protection. Like well, There must be threats as well. There's some things we could be looking at here to help to, to protect these species. Definitely. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. You know, we do need uh, some form of, of designation. You know, in other parts of the world, they would designate uh, habitats like this as areas of critical environmental concern. And I would go as, as far as saying this is an area of critical environmental concern for its populations of sea trout. The sea trout populations and sea trout in general are the poor cousin to the, uh, the more famous uh, Atlantic salmon and the foil is highly designated for its populations of Atlantic salmon but we actually know less about the populations of sea trout and in some crazy ways the less you know uh, it, it disempowers you from actually designating something so by going out and collecting this information the key biological characteristics of known sea trout populations we might be laying the foundations for some form of uh, designation of critical sea trout spawning areas uh, within the foil now it might not happen tomorrow but I think that's a, an admirable goal admirable goal to be working towards in the long term. Threats then, okay, what are the main threats that you would see that, that, that mm -hmm. these fish pose? Well there's a few very, very very key ones which are land use, okay, so anything that can impact on the water quality within it, so that could be from numerous sources. Uh, in more recent years uh, there's uh, been an awful lot of uh, competition for water resources, so abstraction for various purposes, uh, everything from renewable energies uh, through to uh, the aggregate industry can all be impacted on water quality. So I don't want to point too many fingers, but everybody's got a responsibility to act in a, a sustainable manner towards the, the, the environment to protect these populations of uh, sea trout, which are uh, unique. Historically, this small river here in particular would have been fished, there have been anglers here pretty much forgotten now and I think that must be a risk the fact that there's no one using it anymore for recreational purposes these fish need it yeah so when you talk about these smaller rivers they seem to be forgot about people still think main stem rivers and everything else but these smaller rivers I think would you agree are, are the lifeblood are their are the main arteries to the whole system you took the words out of my mouth there uh, whenever you were saying that I just thought they are the lifeblood of the system uh, you know, main stems, uh, slightly larger tributaries, uh, you know, people can get in there, they can fish, they see the fish, but sometimes whenever you take eyes off the smaller tributaries and people stop actively fishing them, uh, they may be less likely to see the impacts that are happening within them. So, you know, we would be very happy to see people, you know, coming back here and responsibly uh, fishing within these areas because it means that somebody's got eyes on the water as well. Pretty uh, much out of sight, out of mind. I decide out of mind, but look, there's hope yet as well. Uh, there's uh, a large number of colleagues that I have that are that are very keen at promoting the sustainable development of our uh, freshwater fisheries resources within both Foyland and Carlingford. Okay, thanks very much, Art. Cheers, Lionel. Thanks.